Let's imagine better health with CHI Health. With prostate cancer, several treatment options are available today. And before long, patients will have access to two additional treatments. They're not available in the U.S. yet. Once they are, our next guest will be one of the first to bring them to Omaha. Yeah, he's CHI Health Urologist, Dr. Stephen Leslie. Good to see you, doctor. Welcome back. Welcome Hi. back to the show. Nice to We've be got back. a lot Thanks. to cover on this segment mm -hmm. here. but And there's, there's new treatment options out there, but let's talk about how common prostate cancer is. Unfortunately, it's very common. It's the second leading cause of male cancer death. Uh, close to a quarter million men will be diagnosed. Mm -hmm. Most of them won't die from it. The estimated death rate is about one in six of men diagnosed with prostate cancer. And that leads to one of the questions, which is, should we spend a lot of time and effort to diagnose prostate cancer early when the majority of people are not going to die from it and some mm -hmm. may actually be harmed by treatment? And that's mm -hmm. created all this controversy about PSA testing. Mm -hmm. We'll talk more about some of those things. Sure. But in terms of detection, generally, how is prostate cancer found? It's usually found now by this PSA blood test. By that test. Unfortunately, the test comes up positive or elevated in many cases where the prostate's perfectly healthy, just enlarged or infected. Mm -hmm. So of those people who have an elevated PSA, only about one in three will end up having cancer. And of them, the majority of the cancers are relatively harmless. In the past, we would either, over, we would either treat them definitively, which is a lot of side effects and complications and cost, or just watch them, something called watchful waiting. Mm -hmm. Now we've gotten away from that and we're doing active surveillance, meaning we watch them very, very carefully and we find three quarters of those people can, can do just fine without further treatment. But there are benefits to the PSA testing. Uh, also, it, there is a biopsy that can be done, right? Well, the biopsy is how we know for sure, not only that it's cancer, but mm -hmm. if it looks relatively aggressive or relatively harmless. The PSA test has been very controversial. The U.S. Preventive Service Task Force came out recently against doing mm -hmm. the testing based on the thought that we find too many cancers that are ultimately harmless and it's not proven to do much benefit. On the other hand, there's plenty of other studies showing a general benefit. Countries that do PSA testing generally have much lower death rates from prostate cancer than those that don't. Our death rate from prostate cancer since PSA testing started has dropped almost 50 percent and wow. there's no other good explanation. Mm -hmm. sure. Wow, and we have some more information here as we're, we're talking about prostate cancer. Your, your message here is not every patient who has prostate cancer needs to be treated. So how do you decide um, as you're visiting with those patients individually what's best for them? Well, that's a great question. Uh, first, you have to look at the general health. For most people with a localized, not terribly aggressive prostate cancer, mm -hmm. it's going to be at least 10 years before there's much of a benefit noticed in survival from treatment. So if someone has lots of other medical problems, maybe they're better off just watching and not going into treatment. People who are over age 75 and have other health problems probably don't need to be screened or treated because they're, the treatment's likely to do more harm than anything else. Than the benefit. Uh, early detection, though, like other cancers, it's critical in this case, too, isn't it, though? Again, it comes to the point of how dangerous is that cancer going to mm -hmm. be. And unfortunately, we don't have the very best 100% guaranteed way to tell. Mm -hmm. If I had a crystal ball and could predict which cancers would do well and which ones wouldn't, it would be wonderful. Mm -hmm. I've seen some people with relatively low aggressive cancers who've had bad results and the other way around. But we're getting better at it. What's coming now is MRI imaging. Mm -hmm. Use of an MRI, which you may be familiar with from other things. Uh, we have a company here in Omaha that's developed a flexible antenna to make MRI imaging of the prostate much more comfortable, much better, much faster, and cheaper. And that's what we're looking at in these, in these pictures right here, right? Yes, that's a picture of an example of an MRI image of what turned out to be a prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. You need a really good machine and very good radiologist. It's still an evolving technology, and I'm very proud of the fact that here in Omaha, we have a company that's taken a leading uh, role in developing an antenna to make this imaging better and more comfortable. And this way you can say for certain, yes, it's cancer, instead of it's, you know, it's something else that's elevated that's giving you that result through the blood Without test. Without a biopsy, mm -hmm. you can't say with 100% mm -hmm. certainty sure. that it's a cancer or review the histology, mm -hmm. the, the cellular characteristics. But in other parts of the world, they're taking the MRI image as de facto evidence for mm -hmm. cancer and bypassing the biopsy and going directly to treatment. But that's because they have uh, treatments that are less invasive. You mentioned mm -hmm. the two new treatments that yes. are still investigational. They yes. just approved one. Okay. Which is exciting though, right? Oh, it's great because now combined with MRI imaging and we have focally effective treatments, this is a game changer. Mm -hmm. uh, instead of radical prostate surgery or definitive radiation with lots of side effects, we're, we're going to have some of these new focally effective ablative technologies. Wow. The first one available is high intensity focused ultrasound. 
And it's not going to be too long before that's going to be available uh, here in Omaha and, you'll, and around you'll be the bringing country. that to our city. And, Just and as fast as I can. The quality right. of life for those patients, when you said earlier, in some cases you're over-treating, but when you can focus it, right, then they don't have as many side effects, right? It takes They're away the argument from the other side. If mm -hmm. your only treatment is to hit the fly with a hammer, mm -hmm. you're going to do a lot of damage. If you can just do something that focuses on that localized cancer and has minimal side effects, uh, now the benefit from early detection and better imaging is far, is far greater. That is I terrific. think this is a major game changer in how we're going to be treating prostate cancer. It is. What's, we've talked a lot. We've covered a, a lot of stuff on this. Uh, what's the bottom line uh, for men out there, for patients? The bottom line is for men who are of, a re of an age group where treatment would be reasonable and appropriate. And for most, that's uh, it's generally thought to be between 50 and 75. Mm -hmm. uh, they should talk about the pros and cons of both uh, screening and treatment. I believe that we should start at least an initial screen at age 40 because there's a lot of evidence that this gives you a good predictor. If your PSA is over 1 at age 40, there's a good chance you're going to uh, want more screening more often because you may be at higher risk. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, if it's low, you're, you're at very low risk for the next 20 to 25 years. Mm -hmm. And this is evidence should, from Europe. Yeah, and that's where you should start at age 40 is that PA, this PSA is my, test, This right? is my that's recommendation. That's your recommendation. Mm -hmm. You yeah. asked about guidelines. Sure. There are guidelines are all over the place. There's at least 35 that I know of, and they're all, wow. they're all over the place from don't do any screening to talk to your doctor about it. Mm -hmm. But if you go to your doc, a doctor for your cold, or your asthma, or your diabetes, uh, he doesn't have another half hour to go into the pros and cons yeah. of testing. So you sure. really have to decide on your own. And for that reason, I put together a little fact sheet that goes over okay. the pros and cons mm -hmm. so people can decide for themselves whether it's worth doing. And you are here today because you said, if, if I can save one life with five minutes on television, then it's more than worth it. So you mentioned that fact sheet. I'd encourage our viewers to call one of the two local numbers on the screen now. You can get that sheet uh, just by calling. You can also make an appointment um, if you would like to talk more about your situation. If this is something, I don't know, family history ever plays into it. Family or, history can be very yeah, important. Yeah. African Americans and people with a personal family history of prostate cancer are at higher risk. And in my opinion, they should certainly seriously consider mm. Uh, PSA testing and screening. Well, and the thing I took away from this, at age 40, uh, that's when you should start thinking about it. Maybe get that PSA test. You're there. Uh, it, it's uh, still optional, yeah. but my recommendation to my own patients is get a, especially if there's a positive family history, mm -hmm. is get a baseline test at 40. It'll give you an idea if you're at higher risk or lower risk. Thank Great. you for coming Dr. in today. Good information. We appreciate your time. Appreciate Thank you. A pleasure.